Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 as the Pandya Empire. In the last episode we had a succession, so we are now playing as a new character. Our previous character died at the age of 70, actually he was murdered, I'm pretty sure, by his wife. Even though we had just given her some very nice jewellery as a present, but there you go. It was fine though, he was old and tired of life probably, so we now have a not great character, apart from his actually very good martial score. He's relatively average otherwise. We have the carousing focus, which actually we should do something about. Let's invite some of our more powerful vassals to a fun party. Which should hopefully improve their opinions somewhat. We do have some factions. Nothing immediately dangerous. Um, okay. Some of these guys are extremely unhappy with me. Our largest faction is at 45% right now. I'm going to hold on to my money so that we can bribe people if it becomes necessary. But I think in the meantime we are going to declare war on the Maharaja here. We no longer have a truce since our character died. And we have a claimant in this county with a strong claim to this whole duchy, so we're going to press that. If we can find him in this extremely long list. I think it is you. And it's this claim that we want to press. So I don't think this war should be too much of a problem. ahead and declare it. I'll use my domain levies, I guess. And my retinue, of course. Okay, this guy is coming to the feast. This guy is not. Nor is he. Or is she? Wow, a lot of people are saying no. Okay, Maharashtra changing his crown laws. That's fine, we might have to raise the levies of one or two vassals, judging by the size of his army here. My spymaster tells me that information about my plot to kill somebody might have leaked to someone outside the conspiracy. We do not know who yet, but maybe we will hear from him. Hmm. You find, it fascinating, you find it fascinating, and you bet that others would too. A hundred gold. Um. I guess I'll just cancel this plot. I don't really actually care about that guy say I won't tolerate blackmail. We should also actually choose a patron deity. Let's choose one that will give us extra diplomacy so that we can have slightly better vassal opinion. All-powerful crowned Vishnu. I think we can afford to give up one marshal for that since we have very good marshal. I'm not going to spend 50 gold on searching for a guru just yet in case we need it for bribes. And let's see. Whose levy should we raise? I don't know whether it's better to raise his levy because he's already extremely upset with me, so we're not exactly making it worse than it already is, or to somebody who has a relatively good opinion. Um, how about one of each, I suppose? Raise his, and. Were you the guy who hates me? No, you. So with 8,000 altogether versus his 6.6, .6, I think we should be looking relatively good there. Half-brother needs educating. Which is good, we can use him for opinion. Eh, 
who is in the factions? I guess that one guy has already got two wards. I suppose we'll just give him to uh, you, why not? Oh, and I guess going to this going to war has um interfered with my carousing. That is unfortunate. Oh well. We should have considered that, I suppose. That's fine, though. We'll... I think actually raise... One more Duke's Levy here, so that we can make absolutely sure that we can beat his army. This county is jungle, and has quite a lot of river crossings, but we can go in from here. without taking one, and let's get some good leaders in charge. Yep, they are unhappy. Alright, he's on the move. Okay, he changed his mind, and we should catch him in this county, I think. He's not even moving, so yes. Alright, you made the mayor happier. And that's fine. I think we'll actually just move him to the court of an actual duke. We'll use him on this guy, the one that is my most negative opinion. He's a pretty good chancellor, so if he gets a few events, we'll have a chance of getting his opinion up above zero. Okay, so he has the jungle on his side, but we have the numbers. And we won, so let's follow him to here. Oh, and we actually captured him in battle. That gets us automatically to 100%. Um, can I not hover over this and see? Uh, I guess we have 50% from the battles and then an automatic 100% from him, so I think I'll just end it instead of ransoming him for a bunch of money. I could ransom him, we'd go back to the 50% war score and then we could do some more battles to eventually win anyway. But I'd rather just end it quickly. Okay, so now we have a dangerous faction. Um, Alright, I guess this is the guy that we just put in charge of this duchy. He was apparently in the faction as a count, and his sudden increase in power has made the faction more powerful, I think. But also, pressing his claim has increased his opinion dramatically, so he should drop out of that pretty quickly. Uh, let's also just bribe her just to make sure things are under control there. We've also joined up some of our discontinuous land, which is nice. She should drop out too. And there we go. So this 28% is now my worst faction. Yeah, he's just not going to like me for a while anyway. That's fine though, we aren't in any danger from there. And I hope we can try to go carousing again and not interrupt it with war this time. So let's see. Uh, let's look here actually and target our most powerful yeah, we can do it again, okay. Ah, so he declined last time, that's why we can't invite him. I suppose we're just not going to be able to invite anyone that declined previously.
don't really need to improve opinion with him, but we might as well invite him anyway. Okay, that will do. And my wife is pregnant, okay. So we should this time keep an ex keep an eye on our son for when he starts producing children. Hopefully quick children, so we can make sure to actually educate them properly. So he declines, he declines, he accepts, he accepts, accepts. Taking that duchy has improved our font size, which is always good. And we can start looking around for who our next claimant is going to be. Nobody for that duchy. Uh, this duchy is just these three counties here. We do have a claimant. Okay, several weak claimants. The current holder is an adult male, so if we can kill him, which it seems that we can, we'll have a way in there. Once our truce expires with the Maharaja, of course. Okay, my daughter is of legal age. Extremely bad character. And when is our feast going to happen? Uh, call to arms. I'm going to decline this because if we're at war we won't be able to have our feast. Okay, there we go. Our guests have arrived for the private feast we have arranged. It's time to let the carousing and merriment begin. Let's get started. These days of revelry are an excellent escape. So many laughs and so many intense conversations in such a short time. It brings you closer to your companions. You feel like good friends already. So we become good friends. Oh, with this guy, who already is extremely happy with me for pressing his claim. It's not exactly helpful. But that's okay. Oh, he's calling me again. Yeah, I'm just gonna decline this one as well. Sorry. The reveling and carousing is over for now. Time to get back to real life. I guess I could have delayed responding to his call and uh, done it after the feast was over, but... That's fine. So we gain 20 prestige and plus one diplomacy. So I think we may actually have something like... Yeah, we have six diplomacy now, so that's quite an improvement on, I think, the zero or one we had previously. Get some free technology from Damascus. And one of my vassals is at war. Is he a double duke now? He is. I don't like that. Um, his titles are under Gavelkind, I think. So hopefully that should resolve, himself, resolve itself when he dies. We could try and kill him. But we already have a plot going to kill this other guy, so let's uh, actually just leave that going for the moment. We'll bribe this guy to get it above 100. And we have another faction. Still nothing too dangerous, though. Uh, the fever has broken, perhaps only temporarily, but I can still see the shadowy figures lurking in the corners. Are they real? Oh, so I guess I had measles, which I did not realize, but um, we are apparently now going to gain the trait lunatic because of it. Which is definitely not going to help our vassal opinion, but it can lead to some fun events, so not too upset about it. Let us go ahead and increase some technology. So we'll go for either improved keeps or castle infrastructure. 
castle infrastructure is probably good. It allows us to upgrade our castle towns. We had a daughter. All right, more factions. And more technology. So still nothing too dangerous happening here. Uh, I never actually checked what war this was he's involved in now. He's attacking in a claim on Nandapur, which I'm guessing is here. So he's trying to expand outside of his rightful territory. He already has one more duchy than he's entitled to. So I'm not really happy about that, but we can't really stop him. We still could try to imprison and release a duke for the, I think it would be plus 15 opinion bonus with all vassals, which might be worth doing. Probably this guy would be our best target there. I think we can move our marshal at this point, so we'll send him to suppress revolts here and we'll try and imprison that guy. 68% chance. And we did it. And plus 15 opinion with all vassals. He himself is going to be a little bit less pleased with me, I think, but he's content, so... He's not going to be too much of a problem, I think. We have a half-brother who needs educating as well. So, let's use him for opinion. And I suppose we'll choose you. It takes more to kill me than measly measles. Good, so we got over the measles. And looks like some of our factions are... Well, one of them disappeared. Certainly not getting any worse, so I think we're okay for the moment there. This guy was introduced by a mutual friend and we talked for quite a while. We had our differences in a few arguments, then we found safe, common ground, and I began enjoying myself. He seems like a decent person. Okay. Um, we can become friends, why not? Uh, we can go carousing again in... Six months or so, so we'll probably do that one more time, and actually we'll probably have time to do it twice more before we can change our focus, if we want to. Might be advisable to keep the extra diplomacy. And I think at this point we can probably afford to spend 50 gold on searching for a guru. And we should probably also hold a Diwali feast, inviting all of our vassals. And let's go ahead and get our wife a jeweled necklace. Okay, this guy has refused our invitation. Okay, welcome all. Snake Charmer is entertaining the guests at the feast. He plays a flute and sings in odd tones to various poisonous snakes that he's brought in a basket. The audience is held captivated by his skills as he seemingly controls the snakes with his voice and his music. Fascinating. There is a silence among the revelers as the Snake Charmer works his magic with the snakes, but suddenly you hear a high shriek and the Snake Charmer looks confused. It seems a large cobra has broken free and is slithering across the floor towards the guests. Oh no. The escaped cobra disappears under the table. There are a few moments of silence and then a terrified scream. One of the guests is shaking in violent convulsions with people nearby staring in shock as they realize the snake has bitten their neighbor. 
As the snake disappears, I threw an open window. The victim stops shaking, stops shaking and lies still dead. Okay. So this guy, who actually is my prisoner, but we still invited him to the feast, apparently, dies. That's fine. Time for the traditional ceremony of gifts. We give our wife her present. And the darkest night of the Diwali is here, the most important night of the feast. We gain 30 karma. And it was a fantastic feast. Okay. We should also be hearing back about our guru. The wise guru has agreed to come to take up residence at our court. He is exceedingly wise. Okay, well that is going to do it for this episode. We are out of time. Thanks for watching and join me again next time.